This is Tarko on Unreal Engine 5. Cool graphics, similar mechanics, they're even anomalous from Stalker. That's the first impression you get when watching videos of this game. But how will it change when you actually play it? What we love about Tarko is the weapon modding, looting and the interesting health system with the complex medicine. It's all there in the game called Project L33T. I'll say right away, this is not an advertisement, but an honest review. I'll divide the video into four parts. A brief lore of the game, similarities and differences between Tarko and L33T, advantages and disadvantages. At the moment, Project L33T in the alpha version. The developer openly says that they were inspired by Stalker, DayZ and Tarko. The team announced that the game will be released in the second half of 2024. But I'll give you a spoiler, I don't really believe it. The game is essentially the same MMO as Tarko, just with its own conventions, I'll tell you about them later. A bit about the lore. You are a member of the elite team L33T. Your goal is to participate in expeditions where you'll search for various loot, artifacts, fight bandits, soldiers and other players. Some kind of catastrophe has happened in this world, apparently related to an alien invasion, which is why we will often come across various strange objects growing from underground, in my opinion reminiscent of Crisis 2. What similarities does it have with the Tarko? Equipment is bought from traders in the same way, at the moment there are only two of them, one sells weapons and the other sells armor, wigs, etc. You need to improve your relationship with them, as you do, new items will be unlocked for you. Reputation with them is increased through trading, so you need to trade more with them. Fortunately, we are given quite a bit of money for this right away. There is a game mod for Marauder, an alternative to our scare. He also starts with the basic equipment. You spawn in a random location, you don't have a pouch and AI won't aggro on you. At least the ordinary guys, I'm not sure about the military. Yes, you understood correctly, there's also the concept of a pouch. Your main character has it and loot placed there will not be lost upon death. Weapon modding. Here it is even more functional. Besides being able to install various models, you can also shift or attach them in different positions. It looks very interesting, I really like it. During the expedition in Breaker's Wait, you can conveniently modify your gun. It's not very realistic, but it looks cool and modern. Destructor proofs. Medicine. There are also different types of medical kits. Some are intended to restore HP, others save from burn, third ones stop bleeding, fourth ones from poison, and many more. In this regard, the game is not lacking. The expedition system itself is also very similar to raids. During the match, you can loot characters, find various items hidden in cars, on shelves, in buildings. Each has its own description, but the possibilities for their implementation besides selling them to traders are not always clear. Stash. It's also here, you don't need to bother with the sorting, because items automatically occupy free cells. As for its improvement, I'm not sure yet, but it looks just like a storage, nothing special. Ammunition and weapons. Here wheel guns and the corresponding cartridges are also used. MP5, M4A1, AK-74U and the models again are realistic. There's a flea market where players can sell items. For now, it's closed for me because I need to complete a quest. But I doubt that with the current online anyone is trading there at all. The interface itself is also quite similar in terms of functionality. There's primary and the secondary weapons. The knife also doesn't disappear upon death. Possible helmet or armor modding is immediately visible and there's no need to open their description. By the way, plays are also used in armor. And to exit the match, we also need to reach the exit, where we'll have to wait for some time. Missions, yes, they are also here. You need to take them from the essential character, for completing them you get both experience and various equipment. 
Most likely, they will also unlock some unique opportunities for buying, obtaining items, etc. Various types of AI. There are both simple guys like scavs and the soldiers who are better equipped resembling raiders. Variety of food and water. There are no animations yet, but beside the health system there is also thirst and hunger. Even throughout the expedition my indicators didn't drop too low, so I can't tell you what negative effects they are from losing them. You can also gather your team. Communicate via VoIP. The main differences from Tarka. Well, first of all, it's the engine. Unreal Engine 5. The lightning, the way the game looks, everything looks different. One feature that I like it is when you enter a building, your eyes need time to adjust to the darkness. Next is the anomalies. Throughout the map, there are spherical lightning bolts flying around that can strike you, giving off a stalker vibe. Да-да. There's no menu in the game as such. You immediately spawn in your hideout, where you physically need to go to the traders take on tasks. You can finally adjust the appearance of your character, not just once and for all, but at any time you can become a completely different person. There's also a separate fitting room where you can change every element of your clothing. There's a crosshair in the game, but you can turn it off in the settings. There's a map marking axis, points of interest and you can also see yourself on the map. This really helps you to get familiar with the game quickly. The location itself differs in its fauna. Around some semi-forest, semi-city, all sorts of black growth protrude from the ground. The atmosphere is different. What's not in the game yet, but promised, is a different vibe system. They will occur every four months, but there will be regular events where you have to fight bosses, engage in various activities. So there won't be a complete dying of the project, with the two months after the reset of progress and calmness from the developers, where we will have to swim in this quagmire and look for entertainment ourselves. The developer writes that their goal is to break the circle of monotony and loss of interest by the middle of the game. At the same time, with the progress we set, the skins you've unlocked, the appearance of the character will remain. There's no such unique health system. We have a variety of different types of injuries, however individual limbs cannot be treated, we just have a general health bar that needs to be restored. What? I'm here again! No, no! What the fuck is this? You need to subscribe to the channel? Oh, get away from me! Sweetie, you'll find mountains of videos about weapons there. Oh, oh, I already have a PM! And also analysis of mechanics on Tarkov. Uh, are there any guides there? If you open, you will find everything there. Just press the button. Now, what are the advantages of Project L33T? The developer intends to address most of the flaws and problems that Tarkov has and eliminate them. Endless sorting in the stash, drown out vibes where the game dies in just two months. Like a Unity engine with the open source code where billion cheaters roam, not using it but taking Unreal Engine. Modern, I wouldn't say it's necessarily better, but it looks quite decent. Graphics, it's a matter of taste, and I wouldn't say it's better than a taco, but at least there's no feeling that you are playing in a black green mess. But what are the drawbacks? And now the most interesting part. The main thing, the game is so raw, that it feels like you are within a code dropped in notepad, not even a hint of something ready. The optimization is just awful, the model slug, the lightning conflicts, there are objects that literally forgot to put textures on. AI is way stupid, Buzz from Tarko seems like Jane is strategist against this backdrop. Shooting doesn't give a feeling of weight, it feels like you are holding a toy gun in your hands, not a really powerful weapon. 
були Spawn in Bats that don't match the weapons they use. The gun magazines are endless, and the character simply reloads like in Call of Duty, which again doesn't fit with the realism. Overall, it feels like you are playing more of a mobile game than a computer one. It reminds me of Arcade Taco, where in attempt to remove the stuffiness, they sometimes remove the meaning of the word realism. The balance is broken to madness. The 9x19 caliber is useless, you can shoot 5 to 8 hits in the face. Bullets fly just randomly. This doesn't resemble an accuracy, MOA, ballistics system. No, they just fly however they want. The character can hold the weapon very strangely. The shooting sounds are also very plastic. Your movement, picking around corners, animations, they are all crooked, angular. There's a nasty inertia from Tarko, but it feels more like artificially cranked input lag than a way to make the character feel heavy. Water, food, they are added for the sake of it, not for real use. Yes, you can get the game for free, just by applying on Steam and waiting. You might get it. But having spent quite a bit of money on the website to get this right to try it out, in the end you get not the project you want to come back to again and again. Right now it's more like a project where you're ready to go into the new speed of updates again and again. Hoping to see a complete overhaul of weapons, shooting, optimization, AI and the game in general. The phrase great idea, shitty execution still applies to Tarko and is even more appropriate here. Therefore, investing money in this project should be seen not as buying a game, but as helping the developer finish it. What are our conclusions? Let's not forget that Tarko has been in development for 9 years and is still in beta. Project L33T is only in the alpha stage, but I bothered by the statement about the release already in 2024. If they want to leave everything as it is, then this is not realism, but an arcade game with elements of realism, where they'll just introduce donations for skins and focus on events. The endeavor is simply magnificent. Cool mechanics, great graphics, interesting concept, but we are still very far from the final product. And I'd like to know what this final product is planned to look like. If it's realism, there's currently no scent of realism here. If it's something like the finals, then something worthwhile might come out, but definitely not Tarko 2. It's time for you to write your opinion about all this. Are you waiting for the release? Do you want to see Tarko on Unreal Engine 5? And will you play if it turns out not to be Tarko 2, but just Project L33T? Thanks for your attention. See you next time. Bye bye.